Good day, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome once more to this session in which we share the verse of the day. The verse of today is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, which says, You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. This verse is on a part of Matthew's gospel that comes immediately after the Beatitudes given by Jesus as a seven on the mount in Matthew chapter 5, 1 to 12. While the Beatitudes focus on the ethical demands of the members of the new kingdom instituted by Christ, this part, Matthew 5, 13 to 16, focuses on actions that these ethical demands are supposed to inspire and engender in us. It focuses on actions using the metaphors of salt and light to speak of what the citizens of that kingdom are supposed to be like. We shall focus on the second metaphor of light to understand its significance in this verse of Matthew. Two metaphors of salt and light, the two metaphors, these two metaphors simply mean that the people of God are supposed to make a difference in the world. The people of God do not have the luxury of choosing to remain passive in our world. Light is one of scripture's most common symbols. In the priestly creation narrative of Genesis chapter 1, it was the first thing that brought order to a world defined previously in terms of chaos and formlessness. You could say that light was the principle that led to the change of chaos into cosmos, that led to the world that we know that as we know it today. From lack of order to a glorious world of orderliness and beauty, light began this whole process. This is why other parts of the scripture relates light to divine activity of transformation. God is light, in him there is no darkness. We read from John chapter 1, in the first letter of St. John 1, 5. Isaiah tells us that the people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. And Matthew chapter 4, verse 16 cites this verse in reference to the person of Jesus. Light as a metaphor for divine activity of transformation is directly related to human activity of transformation when we represent God through our virtues and actions. For this reason, St. Paul tells the Ephesians, But now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. Therefore, these verses call on Christians to acquire a transformative value for the societies they live in. Light is a powerful symbol easy to understand and to apply. There is hardly any instance in which light is not appreciated for its value. Furthermore, light has a way of never being completely imprisoned. Darkness disappears once light is present and Christians are called to be agents that drive away the darkness of our world. This brings focus to the second part of our verse. A city set on a hill can never be hidden. Just as light can never truly be hidden in darkness, the virtues of a good Christian shine forth in our world so that people can see a path to follow. We may not know that sometimes there is a good portion of our world without the moral compass that comes with our faith. If we refuse to use this compass, then the world degenerates into chaos. And the opposite of what took place with that primeval light of creation happens. Instead of order, we create chaos by our inactivity. This verse calls on us today to shine the light of virtue through actions that are perceived as transformative. This is the reason this gospel again tells us, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. What value do you add to the space in which you dwell as a Christian? Today, Christians are being called to go and vote and speak against the evil of dishonest politicians that have held Nigeria and Africa in bondage. We cannot afford to remain silent. Christians are called to live our faith without fear or favor in a world that is becoming increasingly hostile to the Christian faith. Shine your light and be proud you are doing so as a child of the kingdom. God bless you and let us pray. O oh God, shine the light of your grace on our souls and grant us the courage to live as true sons and daughters of yours. Make us a genes of transformation and grant us the courage to answer the call of being your true ambassadors in our world. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen.